Hi, I'm RJ Pruitt with uh, r and Marine Supply here in Sault Ste. Marie. And today we're going to talk a little bit about heavy gauge aluminum boats. Some of the pros, some of the cons, but specifically today we're going to talk about the cost. So Jeff, uh, we've got a few questions uh, that we get often about these boats and we're going to kind of go through some of that. Yeah, well I'm going to step aside let you do some talking. Um, you know, one of the mis misnomers I think in the, in the beginning is why are aluminum heavy gauge boats so expensive? Right. Uh, you know, it used to be maybe five, ten years ago, it seemed like heavy gauge aluminum boats were somewhere around 15 to 20 percent more expensive than a traditional aluminum boat. Well, maybe that's still the case, um, you know, and especially when we're talking about big water boats, there's still definitely, you know, a premium to be paid, but what we like to talk about a little bit more is value. Um, you know, more and more boats have gotten expensive and more and more expensive over the last few years. Um, specifically traditional aluminum boats like brands we carry, Crestliner, Starcraft, um, and, and Starwell have gotten more expensive but really haven't improved on their content. They haven't gained any features, haven't gained any new designs or anything like that. They've gotten more expensive without gaining anything. Um, uh, in fact, all boats have gained price um, over the last several years. Anyone who has shopped for a boat in the past five years or so uh, can attest to traditional aluminum boats have gotten more expensive. In fact, really all boats have gotten more expensive. I just read an article the other day about fiber, a fiberglass boat that's 24 feet long. It was being described as affordable. Um, and I thought that was kind of an interesting headline. And throughout the article, the word affordable was used many, many times. Um, so I read about all the awesome features and the design details, the performance. I was expecting to be pleasantly surprised when I got down to the end of the article where they talked about cost. But really what I found uh, was that they had hit the mark with the name affordable. Um, they typically, um, you can get an idea of how much a boat's going to be when you read through the details. Um, when I got down to the price and I saw an MSRP of $325,000. That's not affordable. That's not affordable. <laughs> um, you know, a boat half that price is not affordable for the vast majority of people who are shopping. However, what we do want to talk about is value. Um, you know, maybe at $325,000 that boat has a lot of value. Maybe a boat at half that price has a lot of value. Um, maybe not affordable for your average buyer, but they have a lot of value. So what, what is we, a good value? So what is a good value? Right. Um, I think value, what you really need to talk about are, are things other than the words cheap, affordable, and inexpensive. They all miss the mark. Um, what you really need to talk about is, is what do you get for your money? Um, if you can afford a boat in the size range, you know, that's 20 feet and bigger, you know, 20, 24 feet, um, the, the exact dollar amount that you're paying isn't what's important. It's what you're getting for those dollars. Um, and, and when you start comparing one boat to another, it becomes pretty interesting when you, when you look at it from a value perspective. Um, how, does one in, how does any particular boat compare to a competitive brand or model? What features and functions are you getting? How does the boat fulfill the purpose intended? That's, that's what we need to talk about when we talk about value. So, so what is a good value in aluminum boats? So in aluminum boats, um, you know, you have traditional boats. Some of them can be considered a good value. Um, you know, we carry some brands that I would consider a good value. However, what we want to talk about today is why heavy gauge aluminum boats are a good value when we start talking about big water boats. Um, you know, big water boats, if you're going to be out on the Great Lakes, if you're going to be in some of the bigger inland lakes, you want a big, safe boat. So over the past year, we've made a concerted effort uh, to focus on products that really differentiate us from the, com from the competition. We have pushed our product mix uh, to provide exceptional value, not just the cheapest price. We picked up Thunderjet, uh, which I'm sitting on here, uh, and we've also reinvigorated the Smokercraft North American Angler brand in our showroom. Uh, there's a very clear reason for this. Heavy gauge aluminum boats are providing the best value when it comes to big water fishing boats. That's what we're seeing. So, I mean, how do you prove it? So, I'm going to stop you real quick. One thing. So, people talk about heavy gauge aluminum boats. We're not talking about heavy boats. Boats aren't heavy. Right. They're just heavy gauged aluminum and the way they're built, um, their weight a ratio is going to be comparable to any other aluminum boat on the market. Okay, it's so, prove it. 
how do we prove that heavy gauge aluminum boats are the best value in big water boats? Well, we've done some research. Um, so right now I'm sitting on a Thunderjet Luxor 200. This is a 20 foot boat to the transom. Um, we've taken a look at this boat and we've compared it to a lot of other boats out there on the market. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit tough to kind of find an apples to apples comparison when you talk between a heavy gauge boat and a traditional boat. But what we've done is taken a look at boats that are comparable in size and function. Um, so this boat here, uh, Luxor 20, it's a 20 foot boat to the transom, but then you've got this extended platform which adds about another two feet to the overall length. Explain that transom and why it's right. like that. So basically what's, what's cool about this boat is you've got this transom uh, where it's a full height transom. You're not worried about taking waves over the stern of the boat. You're not worried about any of that. You get the weight of the engine further back on the boat. It gives you more performance. It gives you cleaner water to the prop. Um, and it also gives you a lot more buoyancy because this boat here actually has an extended running surface. So that running surface runs all the way two feet back from the actual transom of the boat. Um, basically, this is a big water boat um, that provides all the features, all the functions of an offshore boat um, in a 20-foot package, but it actually is a 22-foot, 5-inch package overall. So, what does this compare to? Um, well, this has an 8-foot beam, um, so it's a little narrower than some boats that are out there in the market. However, that is a fully usable 8 foot because inside the bowl, the gunnel design makes it so it's a nice open design. You're not wasting a lot of space with, you know, boxes and bulky stuff that this takes up space but doesn't add any function. Um, less clutter. Uh, for 2021, this has a progressive dead rise hull, 16 degrees at the transom. It also has a full 5 inch full reverse chine all the way down the length of the boat. So a good deep water boat. Um, the other nice thing is this has a nice deep cockpit. It's 28 inches deep. Uh, and then also the consoles and the windshield are pushed forward on this boat to give you more space in the aft end of the boat. Um, so overall length 22 foot 5 inches um, and 8 foot beam. So I, when we were in a uh, boat show last, last winter I walked around, you're always checking out every other boat in there, and we had one of these, a smaller version of this, and then we had a Spoker Craft Phantom. And if you look at the actual space on the floor, walking space within the boat, um, there was no comparison. No comparison at all. I mean, and I've now fished out of one of these quite a bit from one of our customers that I sold it to, and it's awesome. There's so much room to walk around. I just wanted to interject that because I've actually gone around, and, and we've all done Okay, so what's this boat going to compare to? Okay, so in a traditional aluminum boat, uh, there, there are a couple of boats that come to mind in this size class. The Crestliner Authority or Sportfish, they're the same basic boats, different, different layout, 2250, or the Lund Baron 2275. As an aside, uh, both Crestliner and Lund are also part of the Brunswick boat family, same as Thunderjet. So Thunderjet came into this family just a few years ago. Um, but they've been making heavy gauge boats for over 35 years. Uh, don't confuse the Thunder Jet name uh, with jet boats. Yes, they do make a line of inboard jet boats, which as you can see, this is an outboard powered boat. The vast majority of the boats that they build are outboard power, and that's what we carry. Um, so they're, they're great boats, um, and again, outboard powered. Don't let that Thunder Jet name confuse you. Okay, all right, so let's get to the point. Okay, so the point is... Uh, a it looks Lund, expensive. Yeah, so it does, it, it does look expensive. Um, so let's look at the Lund Baron 2275. Let's, let's look at this and compare it um, dollar-wise to this, this Luxor 20. Um, the, the Lund Baron is also a big boat. Um, it's a very well-respected, well-designed, and popular boat for those looking for something to use in big water. The Baron is 22 foot 9 inches overall and has a 102 inch beam, which is 8 foot 6 inches. Um, so it is slightly larger than this boat overall, uh, but how they are actually very different paths to the same goal, big water boats. Um, there are many differences, but how the boats are used and how they can safely get you out to the fish is remarkably similar. The Luxor, while slightly smaller, has more usable space, easier fishability, and more options and features that truly set it apart. The boat here, um, as you can see, is equipped with a full hardtop. This is an option. Um, it's it's a, not an inexpensive option, but it's an option that is definitely sets this boat apart from a Lund. Um, that all being said, uh, 
uh, it's hard to provide a perfect apples to apples comparison. What we have done is priced out both boats with the very basic options and features to get you get as close as we can. So, a couple of things we need to get off the off the table right away. The Lund is rated to 400 horsepower. This boat is only rated to 225 horsepower. So a very big difference as, as far as that's concerned. Obviously, horsepower drives price. So what we've done is we've priced this boat out with a 225 um, Pro XS. So that's a V8 Mercury four-stroke. And we've compared that to a Lund Baron with a 250 Mercury V8. So very similar engines uh, that gets us very close to the, the same pricing. So this boat is only rated to 225 horsepower. That 225 horsepower is going to make this be a 50 plus mile an hour boat. So plenty fast, especially if you're out in big water. Um, you know, if you're running in rough water, you don't need to run more than 50 miles an hour. Um, so for comparisons, we're doing a 225 Pro XS on the Luxor 20 and a 250 on the Lund Baron 2275. So how much is a Lund Baron? with a 250. Uh, according to Lund, the MSRP for the base boat, motor, and a trailer is a little over $88,000. $88,000. For anyone that has shopped for a new boat, you know that this MSRP isn't the actual selling price. All the manufacturers give us dealers some leeway uh, to, to adjust our pricing to meet our market demand. So a Lund Baron 2275 with a 250 in the base trailer will sell for probably around $77,000. Not a cheap boat. Um, is it an affordable boat? Not really an affordable boat, boat for most people. Uh, but if you want to fish in big water, you need a big boat and it's going to have a big price tag. Okay, so how much does the Thunderjet cost? I'm sitting on this one, I know exactly how much it costs. This is one of the main reasons that we've adjusted our product mix to include Thunderjet, but more importantly, heavy gauge aluminum boats as a whole. This boat with a Mercury 225 Pro XS, the top of the line trailer, it's a tandem axle, galvanized trailer, swing tongue, all the, all the details, uh, and priced out very well uh, equipped with all the fishing equipment that you would want on this boat. Um, includes many options that we uh, will show you in some details. Um, also has a lot of standard features that the, the Lund doesn't even offer. Um, the Lund is a little over $77,000 out, you know, uh, with, uh, with dealer discounts included. This Luxor 20 with a 225 Pro XS has an MSRP for a little under $77,000. So that's less than the Lund's um, selling price. This boat, um, and again, the boat as shown and as equipped, would sell for around $65,000. This boat that I'm sitting on with a 200 with a hard top sells for around $65,000. Okay, so, so what's gonna provide more value? So right now, what I'm saying is, it's not hard to tell. Thunderjet is providing you more value. A heavy gauge aluminum boat is providing you more value. It's going to do everything that Lund does and then some at a lower price, substantially lower price. So you're saying the Thunderjet? I'm saying the Thunderjet. Thunderjet clearly wins. If all you're talking about is dollars and cents, Thunderjet wins. Um, you can add so many options and so many features such as hardtops, such as, you know, transom doors, such as, you know, all the different interior layouts and things that we can do with one of these boats. It's really difficult to overcome, you know, the dollars and cents uh, when you compare this directly to a Lund Baron. Okay, so let's just let's just say someone was thinking about buying a Lund Baron. Yep. And they're comfortable with the price. Right. They they think okay, that's 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 that's, the, that's I, the price for getting into a big big water boat. And that's right. and that's what I want. Let's just say. So, what else do you consider? Well, you consider a lot of things. If you're going to compare between a Lund and a heavy gauge aluminum boat, um, you've got a lot of options. So, um, on the Lund, if you're going to add some options uh, to bring the price up to get a boat that's equipped a little better to, to meet your requirements, it's interesting when we start looking at Thunderjet and all the different options we can add to it as well. So on a Lund, if we add a full Kansas enclosure, we add smart craft gauges, we add a wash down pump, maybe a couple other small items, we bump the MSRP all the way to $92,000. Again, that's with a 250 um, outboard Mercury V8. So typical selling price is going to be somewhere around $81,000. Um, 
Lund doesn't really specify on their website if they're including freight, dealer prep, or any other fees that a dealer might need to add um, to sell that boat, but that $81,000 is at least a good starting point. So we have an understanding of what the actual transaction price is going to be. So can somebody buy a Thunderjet, you know, for the same money? Absolutely. So what's really neat about Thunderjet is they've got a very wide variety of different options. So one of the boats that we really like a lot is what they're calling an Alexis Pro. So uh, Thunderjet has a lot of different boats. They've got, this is a Luxor, they have a Chinook, and then they have the Alexis. The Alexis is, is a, a little wider boat. Um, it's, it's also longer. Um, so the Alexis Pro 22 is an exceptional value, and here's why. It's a boat that's 24 foot, 5 inches overall, has a 102 inch beam, which is 8 foot 6, and it has a 29.5 20, inch cockpit depth. It's also a self bailing cockpit, um, something that Lund doesn't even offer. Uh, there's also a transom walkthrough door to the platform and the full style, full pilot style hardtop. We priced one of these with the same Mercury 250 as the one. We also added several options to make this boat a true big water fishing master. Um, MSRP including freight and, a, and prep is a bit over $94,000. The boat would retail for approximately $80,000. So again, you're getting a 24 and a half foot boat, same width, full pilot style cabin on it for less money than a Lund Baron with the same engine. Um, it's a no, nearly two feet longer um, and very, very different as far as how and what you can do with this boat in big water. So what, what does it all mean? It all means that, that heavy gauge boats, when you start comparing them to the traditional brands, it's almost impossible to, to get away from the value proposition that they offer. Um, if you're looking at big water boats, Heavy gauge aluminum boats are really what you need to consider. Um, when you look at the features, the different things you can do, hard tops and you know different configurations in the in the interior, it's it's really difficult to look Easy. at it other than a heavy gauge aluminum boat.